సద్గురు గారు నమస్కారం హృదయపూర్వక నమస్కారాలండి వందనాలు నేను మీతో తెలుగులో మాట్లాడుద్దాం అనుకుంటున్నాను ఇప్పుడు కొంచెంసేపు హైదరాబాద్ వచ్చారు మీరు చక్కగా రెండు వాక్యాలు మీరు తెలుగులో మాట్లాడి మమ్మల్ని ఆశీర్వదిస్తే నేను చాలా సంతోషిస్తాను నా తెలుగు తేనెలాగా లేదండి ఇప్పటి వరకు నదుల గురించి మనం ఎంతో ఆవేదనని మనం షేర్ చేసుకుని చాలా బరువెక్కిన హృదయాలతో ఉన్నామండి నేను ఈ కాన్వర్సేషన్లో మీతో నదుల గురించి మాట్లాడి ఇంకా నేను అదే మూడ్లో ఉండదలుచుకోలేదు ఎందుకంటే నా హృదయం ఇప్పటికే బాధతో బరువెక్కింది మిమ్మల్ని నాకు అవసరమైన ప్రశ్నలు ఇక్కడ నా సోదరులు సోదరి మండలికి అవసరమైన వాళ్ళకు ఉపయోగపడే ప్రశ్నలు నేను తయారు చేసుకుని వచ్చాను పరీక్ష పరీక్ష రాయడానికి వచ్చినట్టుగా వచ్చాను ఇన్ని ప్రశ్నలు తీసుకుంటే ఎలాగండి ఇది ఆన్సర్ పేపర్ లాగా ఉంది ఇది లేదు పేపర్ లాగా లేదు అదే పేజీలు చూస్తే ఆన్సర్ పేపర్ లాగా తెలుస్తుంది నాకు క్వశ్చన్ ఆ ప్రశ్నలు ఆ ప్రశ్నల వల్ల నేను కొంత లాభం పొంది ఇక్కడ సోదర సోదరి మండలందరూ కొంత లాభం పొందాలని ఆశిస్తూ సరదాగా మిమ్మల్ని ఒక చిన్న ప్రశ్నతో మొదలు పెడతానండి మీరు హైదరాబాద్ వచ్చారు కాబట్టి డివోటీస్లో ఎవరైనా మిమ్మల్ని భోజనానికి ఆహ్వానిస్తే ముగ్గురు ఆహ్వానించారు మిమ్మల్ని ఒకరు ఆవకాయ పప్పు రెడీ చేసుకున్నారు ఇంకొకరు హైదరాబాదీ బిర్యానీ రెడీ చేసుకున్నారు ఇంకొకళ్ళు జిలేబీ రెడీ చేశారు మీరు ఎవరింటికి ఆతిథ్యానికి వెళ్తారండి మధ్యాహ్నం అయితే ఆవకాయ నైట్ అయితే జిలేబీ అండి సద్గురుజీ ఐ షెల్ ఐ కంటిన్యూ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ తెలుగులోనే కంటిన్యూ చేస్తామండి అందరూ తెలుగు అడుగుతున్నారు సద్ సద్గురుజీ ముందర నాకు ఒక మన మన మానసిక సంఘర్షణ ఉందండి మనసులో ఎప్పటి నుంచో ఆ విషయంలో మీరు నాకు సలహా కావాలి నేను కొన్ని సంవత్సరాల క్రితం ఇంట్లో కూర్చున్నప్పుడు గోడ మీద బల్లి కనబడుతుందండి ఆ బల్లి ఎదురుగుండా ఒక చిన్న పురుగు ఉంటుంది దాన్ని నేను కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేసి చూసినప్పుడు అది అటెన్షన్ నాకు వచ్చినప్పుడు ఆ పురుగుని అది తినడానికి సంసిద్ధం అవుతుందని నాకు అర్థమవుతూ ఉంటుంది నేను తొందరగా వెళ్ళి దాన్ని తరిమేస్తాను పురుగుని సో దట్ లిజర్డ్ ఈజ్ నాట్ గెటింగ్ ఇట్ అంటే దాన్ని సేవ్ చేసిన సంతృప్తి కోసం నాకు తరిమేసేవాడినండి కొన్ని సంవత్సరాల తర్వాత ఏమనుకున్నానంటే అది దానికి ఆహారం కదా మనం దాన్ని ఎందుకు డిస్టర్బ్ చేయడం అనేది వదిలేయడం అలవాటైందండి ఇప్పుడేంటంటే ఎప్పుడు ఆ సందర్భం ఎదురైనా సరే అది వదిలేయాలా దాన్ని తెరమేయాలా అనే సంఘర్షణతో నిత్యం నాకు అది ఉండే ప్రాబ్లం అండి అది దానికి మీ మీ యొక్క ఓటు నాకు కావాలి ఏం చేయాలి ఆ సందర్భంలో నేను దాన్ని తెరమేయాలా దాన్ని వదిలేయాలా అట్లాగా వీ షుడ్ లీవ్ ద లిజర్డ్స్ బిజినెస్ టు ద లిజర్డ్ బికాస్ ద వెరీ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ ఈస్ సచ్ దట్ వన్ లైఫ్ కన్జ్యూమ్స్ అన్ అదర్ లైఫ్ దిస్ ఇస్ హౌ లైఫ్ ఈస్ డిజైన్ this is not my idea or your idea this is the nature of life just because uh, a little bit of brain or cerebral development happened recently you know just some time ago we were all monkeys just recently this brain developed a little bit so we little over excited about our own intellect that we started thinking everything in fragments our idea of well being is all in fragments we think we will save the moth but we did not think about the lizard then we thought let him eat 
it's not for you or me to even think whether he should eat or not. He will eat. If he cannot eat, he will die. This is the nature of life. In human societies, we create situations because to sustain life in a certain way, to protect life in a certain way, because we are not physically as empowered as even a lizard or a bird or an animal or a tiger or an elephant, we are not empowered like that. We have an intelligence, we have a consciousness which is beyond them but we don't have physical prowess like them. So human societies need to be cultured where both the strong and the weak can exist. But nature is not made like this, only the strong survive, the weak must go. But this is not even about strong and weak what you are talking about, this is the natural cycle of life. And uh, if we interfere with that, it is because we have wrong ideas of life. We have a set of moralities which are not life, which doesn't fit into life, which does nourish life. If you have a morality or an ethic which does not support life, I think uh, unknowingly you are becoming death-oriented. So you will see this happening to people <laughs> who have taken on to big moral values and ethics. They can't even smile for nuts. If they smile, their face will crack up <laughs> because they have created an unnatural sense of life within themselves. All this problem is coming because of a kind of a natural level of self-significance that human beings have assumed about themselves. The worst idea that was put into human mind by religious groups is you are made in God's own image and all other creatures here are here to serve you. No, no, if you pay… I have paid enough attention to ants and birds and animals and insects, I find they have a full-fledged life of their own, an entire system of life, a society, a family, everything within themselves. Why are we thinking we are the only life and all of them are here to serve us? This is the most disastrous idea. We must understand every life has a right to live here as you and me have a right to live here. As much right, not any less right. The ant and the elephant have equal right to exist in this. This is how nature is created. It is only in human mind we think elephant is big, ant is small. That does not exist in nature. Elephant may be big, ants have democratic numbers. <laughs> if we hold a vote, ants will win. <laughs> so if you go by human values and hold a democratic election in the jungle, ant will become the king of the jungle. Next time I… next time I will uh, leave lizard's business to itself, uh, <laughs> Sadhguruji. Sadhguruji, if the farmer is informed about the rains and other uh, weather conditions in advance, maybe a, a two days or be it one week or one month sometimes, he is being benefited in, in farming. Similarly, a fisherman is being benefited when he is informed about the cyclones or tsunamis to come in advance. They are forecasting and predicting. If this is right, why can't astrology be useful for mankind in many ways by giving information in advance by experts, not, not anybody, by proper astrologers, proper scholars and eminent astrologers. I saw a video of yourself Somewhere condemning, uh, uh, where, where did you uh, condemn? Uh, condemn? The, did I yeah. condemn anybody? No, I, no, no. I, I mean, have not hanged anybody yet. You, you said, you said, there is no need for astrology. Why do you want to depend on uh, planets, lifeless planets? But can't we depend to an extent? 
by availing the great science uh, all rishis developed since ages. So the choice is this. So this is a popular question, everybody became quiet. Uh, we must understand this. There is material in this world, the five elements, the water, the wind, the earth, the fire, the space. And there are products which have come out of these five elements. From a simple plant, the simplest plant life to animal life to human beings, all these are the products of that. It is just that the products went on evolving. See, there was a time as civilizations grew, if you… S if you look for ancient civilizations, most of the time you look for pottery pieces, yes? Pieces of pottery. What pottery means is you dug the earth and made pot out of it. You made this kind of pot, you made this kind of pot, you made that kind of pot, whatever kind of pot. That is the best they could do thousand, two thousand years ago or five thousand years ago or whatever number. Today, you are digging the same earth and make a computer out of it. Same earth or no? The same soil with which you made a pot. Today you are building a spacecraft, isn't it? So this is what life has also done. With the same soil, with the same elements, what with which it created an amoeba, Today it has made a Kiravani, <laughs> all right? So, can you treat a pot and a computer the same way? We cannot… No, 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 if I keep a pot here, if I keep a pot here, we know pot will stay only here. If you don't handle it right, it'll break, otherwise it'll stay here, all right? But… Yes, Today you can make a computer which will walk, which will talk, which will go all over the place. But it goes to a program. But now what a human being means is, we have evolved a consciousness. That means we can go beyond the natural tendencies of the materials with which we are made. That's what it means. We can go beyond whatever directions the wind is maybe blowing this way, there was a time if wind blows this way, all the ships went that way. Today, it doesn't matter which way the wind is blowing, they will go where they want to go. Isn't it so? So, this is because of human consciousness, human ability and human will to do what? So similarly, all of you have a horoscope? All of you have a horoscope? Just one or many versions, come on, eh? Those of you married, I'm sure you have at least two. <laughs> one was made to match the alliance, another was made at birth <laughs> Those in the business know these things, okay? Now, why I'm calling it a horoscope is, I'm asking you a simple question. If there is a truly in intelligent human being in this hall, can you predict what they will do tomorrow? They may do something that's never been done on this planet, isn't it? But if you see a fool, you can say what he will do tomorrow <laughs> and what he will do the rest of his life. So if it can be written down on paper and given it to you that this is what you will do, I'm sorry. <laughs> now. Does it mean to say the planets, the elements and various other influences have no influence on us? Definitely they have. They have influence on us. But the question is this, do you believe that inanimate things in the world, the planets, stars and whatever else are superior or human consciousness is superior? You must decide. Which should determine the destiny of which one? Should we decide the destiny of the planet or the planet should decide the destiny of who we are? So if you… if you do not take life into your hands, 
then planets will decide what should happen to you to some extent. But if you take life into your hands, planets cannot decide, you must know this, the best astrologers in the world, in the country at least, if you tell them I am on a spiritual path, they will say, no, we won't make predictions for you because you have taken life into your hands. We can't make predictions for someone who's taken life into their hands. <clears throat> I'm… I'm interested. I'm interested to see that every one of you take your life into your hands. What it means is, if you have mastery over your physical body, fifteen to twenty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have mastery over your mind, fifty to sixty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have mastery over your life energies, one hundred percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. Sadhguruji, I totally agree with you and satisfied but still disagree with you in a way. Let me tell you, I, I know pretty well that you love uh, to uh, drive a car, good car. There are signboards on the way, an accident prone zone. That doesn't mean every car passing uh, through that zone will meet with uh, an accident, but it is more prone than the other areas, so that you will be cautiously driving first of all, while you are passing them. First of all, no government has any business to say accident-prone zone. Unfortunately, they're saying it. They have no business to say it. They must tell me what is the grade of the road, what is the degree of turn, and I will decide how the hell I should drive. <laughs> if… if there are… if there are any surprises on the road, if there are any surprises on the road, there is a broken bridge, there is a deviation, there is a diversion, they must mention that. Why the hell are you telling me it's accident porn just because some fool and went and crashed? <laughs> See, there are many people who will buy a car, new car, before they bring it out of the showroom, they will take a coconut and break it on the car, and create a dent on the car and then drive it because they're shit scared of driving. <laughs> if I… if you give… I… <laughs> I don't get to buy a car, what people give I drive. Otherwise, if I buy, I will swing it out of the showroom on the first day. I won't sit and do puja in front of the car because I'm… I know how to drive. For now, agreed, agreed, uh, Sadhguruji, for now. <laughs> I wish I will have one more conversation with you somewhere else <laughs> on the same subject. Sadhguruji, See, what is are, the… No, no, let's… let's understand this. See, this is all it is. There are many uncertainties. I may be very good driver, but still I can hit something or something can hit me of always this chance is there, do you understand? This chance is always there with every aspect of life, not just with road. So the problem is, because you don't have the courage to handle it, you want to know what will happen tomorrow. Well, if you want to know what will happen tomorrow, one thing that will happen to you is, you will not play today's game well. Yes. And essentially you are a match fixer <laughs> That is, you want to know the result before you play the game, you are a match fixer, isn't it? Right now it is if you… Uh, for match fixing in India, there is a ten-year imprisonment <laughs> So before you get married, you want to know whether you live joyfully or not, are <laughs> You have to get married, you have to take responsibility for each other and see that it works. There is no magic to it. <laughs> Sadhguruji, what is the quality uh, you find in an Indian woman when compared to the world woman, other countries, 
what is the best and beautiful quality? One single quality can be mentioned. Are you trying to get me into trouble? <laughs> How she is different and how she is greater than when compared to the other women all over the world. <laughs> See, uh, I don't know why we are putting only women on the focus. We are always putting women in the focus because we believe either they can be right or wrong. And of course, men are right. <laughs> so because we are always right, we are looking whether this is the right kind of woman or the wrong kind of woman. The nature has given a larger responsibility for the woman in terms of bearing a child and having a profound influence on the child in the early part of child's life. And when we talk about a child, don't think this is about reproduction. You and me are here because of that. So, our very existence began in a woman's body. That is, if you are normal birth, I am normal birth. If you are normal birth, our life began in a woman's body. And today, the simple biological factors of being male or female, we are exaggerating it too much. I'm saying, when you're walking on the street, why should you be bothered whether somebody is a woman or a man? Why are you bothered what is in somebody's pants? It's not your business. Only in bathrooms and bedrooms it should matter, nowhere else. In the working places, on the street, Wherever else we are, why should it matter whether somebody is a man or a woman? Why can't you just treat, it, treat them as human beings? I think we are excessively focused on this, which is creating a very unhealthy atmosphere. That means we are constantly over-infatuated with body parts, that is why we are going on recognizing people as… by their gender. You are not recognizing people by their intelligence by their capabilities, by their competence, only by their gender. <clears throat> but it is not a fair way of looking at the world. For certain aspects of our life, gender is important. But for rest of the life, how much brains you got is important, how much capable you are is more important. Gender is only valid in certain relationships. In rest of the relationships, gender shouldn't even come into the picture. Only then there will be equality. There is no need <clears throat> There is no need to go on talking about women's rights. We must say human rights and women are part of it, that's all. So, about the Indian woman <laughs> Should I still talk? <laughs> In this country, for a long time, we've nurtured many wonderful things. But these wonderful things, because of many misunderstandings, have also taken on very horrendous forms. When I say it, it's taken on horrendous forms, many simple things which were done for the protection of the woman, for the well-being of the woman, have become discriminatory over a period of times and taken on very horrendous forms of exploitation. We must look back and see why these little things were created. If we don't address these things, the Western world is in… on a binge because they want to make male and female equal. It is not necessary to be equal, equal opportunity is fine. It is not necessary to expect a woman to do the same things that a man is doing. Then what is the point of the gender differentiation that nature has made? 
it's important, the feminine in the world is as important as the masculine in the world. <clears throat> if… but today, in the name of equality, women are coming to your place where they are beginning to act like men because they know that's the only way they can succeed in the world. The only way they can succeed is they have to act like men. You see, even women doing like this these days, uh, this is not necessary because if you destroy the feminine, then you truly have enslaved the woman. If you do not value the feminine in the world, all the gentleness will go away, you will have a marketplace at home also. Your, mar your marriage also will be a marketplace. It's already happening big time. Before people marry, they are making an agreement. When we break, who will get what in this house? Yes, prenuptial agreements are being made. Before we get married, already an agreement, if we break, my bank balance is mine, yours is yours. How can two people live like this? But here, still we have the joy of two people becoming one and enjoying that maybe after some time you will fight, but still, <laughs> at least you have the joy of weaving two lives into one. When you go at it like this suspiciously in the name of equality, you will never know the joy of knowing each other, mingling with each other, being one with each other, nothing will happen, home will become a marketplace, this is because of wrong ideas of equality. Equality you should not even talk about, we should talk about responsibility for each other. Very beautifully explained, uh, Sadhguruji, uh, thank you very much. And the next question is… Yeah, answer copy cheshaval chushanu, then question le copy cheshunare me. These are not copied questions, Guruji, these are mine only. Copy chase evalu alage, valle rasko nustarandi. I just wanted to… <laughs> I just wanted to save your valuable time. So, I… I just… Pre, uh, written. Okay. <laughs> Guruji, Ayurvedic science me, me, uh, medicine is, uh, will identify the three major properties of uh, the human body, sattva, rajas and tama, which is not recognized by the uh, allopathy science. So my question is, when you recognize these three uh, qualities in a body, human body, and differentiate accordingly, how different and how how different it will be for a tamasic uh, food ca consumer, be it non-vegetarian or uh, masala, whatever. Generally, in general, a tamasic food ca consumer, how difficult for him to cope up with the other people in doing like spiritual practices like yoga and other meditation and all. Will it make any difference for the tamasic food consumer and sattvic food consumer? I'm putting it that way. When we say tamas, rajas and tas, sattva, what it means is those kind of food substances which create lethargy in the system, dullness, increases sleep. Sleep means death. You are dead for eight hours a day or ten hours a day, whatever. Or one third of your life you are anyway dead. Rajas means you are active in the world. Activity without the necessary awareness, after some time you will get frustrated with activity because suddenly one day when you stop and look, you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. Tamas means you're conscious, it brings consciousness. This is not just in food, this is in us. We are also recognizing foods which support this, that's all. It is not that food will cause these qualities in you. You have these qualities, some foods support that, some foods don't support that, that's about it. Food is not a deciding factor. 
you can eat garbage and still be a Buddha. But why eat something which doesn't support you and go against it? See, it is like you bought a diesel car and you put kerosene in it. You buy a petrol car and you put diesel in it, it will still go, but it will not function at its optimum. So we should see what kind of food are we designed for. If you look at this fundamentally, there are various aspects which will tell you certain stories about what you should eat. Now it is not only about human beings, it is about the individual human being. And right now what is the nature of your quality accordingly you should eat. If you leave it to your senses, your senses know what to eat, how much to eat, how much of what to eat. But because <laughs> too much education, sense is gone. <laughs> Everything is by information. What to eat, they will Google and see. If you… In the in initially you said, if a farmer can be told about meteorological predictions, if a fisherman can be told about meteorological predictions, how things will happen. I want you to understand, even now, the best fishermen in the world never look at the meteorological production predictions. <laughs> I've been on fishing boats with some people off the African coast and Mediterranean coast. They put their nose up in the air and he says, in two hours there'll be a storm, storm, we need to go back, okay? He never looks at the thing. Because every other creature knows there is going to be a storm. If you observe the fish, they're all behaving… You know, when tsunami happened in southern India, we were the first people to be there. In less than twenty-four hours, we were there with medical vans and I was personally there. What I noticed was, there were lots of dead bodies, human dead bodies. Cattle which were tied down, they had died. None of the loose cattle had died. Even the donkeys did not die. Even the fish, not a single dead fish on the beach. All of them knew it's coming. Only human beings did not know it's coming. Not only that, in Andamans, we have a air force station. They have the best meteorological <laughs> stuff, they did not know it's coming and the entire Air Force base got really washed up. Why I'm telling this to you is because when we say we are the most evolved life on this planet, what it means is we have the most complex and sophisticated neurological system. If we have the most complex and sophisticated neurological system, we must be able to sense more things than anybody can sense, isn't it? No, no, don't clap, you're not sensing anything <laughs> But now, because of a little cerebral activity, our thought and emotion has overtaken us in such a way what you think and feel has become paramount. Your psychological drama has bigger… has become bigger than the cosmic drama. Yes, what you are thinking today, isn't it more important than what's happening in the entire cosmos? So because of this fallacy, because of this misunderstanding, because you're too engrossed in your own psychological drama, you can't sense it. Otherwise, I must tell you this, I was living on a farm, in a remote place outside of Mysore many years ago. I hired one guy whose hearing was very bad. Because his hearing is bad, he looks like a fool because he doesn't understand what people say. So in the village everybody makes fun of him, uh, they call him names and things and you know, treat him badly. So I said, you come and live on my farm, so he lived on. He will simply sit like this because he can't have conversations. If I have to have conversation with him, I have to shout at him, he will understand half the sentence. So he simply sits. Suddenly one day he gets up and starts preparing the plow and the bullocks. I say, what are you doing? He says, no, tomorrow we will plow. I said, there is the rain. He says, no, it's going to rain tonight. I look at the sky, it's all empty sky. How is it going to rain today? No, Swami, it will rain today. And it will for sure rain today. 
and tomorrow morning he's plowing at 5.30 in the morning. Then I thought, oh, this dumb idiot, he knows something that I don't know. So I went there and sat just like him, squatting where he used to sit, same place and I put my hand out like this, like this, trying to feel the moisture, temperature, smell of the earth, this, this, this. I took eighteen months, every day I sat because I was insulted, this dumb idiot knows something that I don't know, I can't take it. <laughs> so I sat there, felt it, watched the leaves, watched the insects, watched the birds. Then today I will tell you, if I say there's going to be rain, ninety percent there is going to be a rain. This is not some magic, this is not some yoga, this is just observation. That's all. <laughs> Sadhguruji, one of my uh, family friend's son, he, his name is Vishwak and he's just seven years old. Ever since he was born, all his interests were about seeds or plant, plants and trees. He was, uh, he's obsessed with only them, no chocolates, no biscuits, no cakes, no sweets, no toys, no video games, no playing outside. And he's completely into, meditatively into thinking and obsessed about knowing about trees, planting them, nurturing them and collecting many seeds and all. When I mentioned this to one of my friend, another friend, he commented, this must be something uh, he attained from previous incarnation. He's a prodigy. Because we, 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 we rarely, we, we don't see one, one in one crore also, we don't see a child like that, completely obsessed with plants. So my question is, Sadhguruji, do you believe in incarnations to come and the previous ones? Because in certain beliefs, certain religions, they don't believe. What is your uh, thought, what's your call on that? It doesn't matter incarnation or no, you got to put that boy in my car. because very few lives have that much sense as to how life happens. Others never paid attention to anything. Uh, there is need for so much entertainment in the world simply because people have no attention for life. If you pay attention to life, you will see it'll engage you in such a way, there is no time for any entertainment. If you just observe one plant growing, it will keep you engaged for an entire lifetime because it's so fantastic. Simply you see, ah, plants are growing. You're a tourist on this planet <laughs> because all the time all you're doing is take a selfie. Plant, selfie. Tree, selfie. Elephant, selfie. Sadhguru, selfie. You are a tourist. A tourist will not know Hyderabad as a Hyderabadi will know Hyderabad, isn't it? So you must decide whether on this planet you are a tourist or you are a life that's born out of it, carries the earth within you, lives it and dies into it. <laughs> so, one boy after ma <laughs> of many millions that are born every day, one boy, put him in my car <laughs> He got your blessings, uh, Sadhguruji, he's, wherever he is now, he is very lucky to have your blessings. And speaking with you, I, I just realized one thing that I forgot that I am a singer. Please sing, sir. I, I, I am recollecting when you are talking about selfie, I am recollecting one of the most popular Tamil song. Vandanaal mudal indanaal varai vanam maara villai nadiyum maara villai No, no, maari pochi nga, maari pochi, romba maari pochi. Manidan maari vita. Because of the man's evil intentions, selfish intentions, it, it happens. Sir. It's, it, the song, it says, man's nature. But my question Sadhguruji, you're talking about selfies. Wherever you go, 
you are lost in uh, uh, you are obsessed with selfish and you are self obsessed so this self obsession in what kind 100 years back would have been in mankind because there were no cell phones and there were no selfies but the nature this nature this self obsession nature should have been there definitely it's a hypothetical question can you uh, uh, kindly guess what kind of obsession that man uh, have oh i had? thought you thought i'm more than 100 years so you're asking me <laughs> how was it 100 years ago <laughs> well i look it maybe so <laughs> See, uh, people have always been the same. It is just that it's like this. Even thousand years ago, people were digging the soil. But today we got earth movers, so we dug it up seriously because we have the tools. Even then they've been trying to divert little bit of river water to their land with their pickaxe. Today we are doing with big machines, so it looks like a disaster. Even then they were self-obsessed. They decorated themselves, they tattooed themselves, they did all kinds of things to themselves. Now you have technological tools, so it looks very enlarged. The same people, same problems. Just that with technology, it has taken on a different turn and a different color. Even then people were looking at the mirror, now they're looking at the phone, you know. When there was no mirror, people were shining their brass plate and looking at the brass plate, how they're looking. So today they've got a phone which does all kinds of things for them, so it is going out of control. The self-obsession, the tools for self-obsession hundred years ago were very minimal. Today there are too many a whole industries thriving on your self-obsession. <laughs> so it looks very enlarged. But fundamentally human beings are same. I don't see any difference. I've been around for more than hundred years, you can see. Sadhguruji, uh, my friend Smita told me that Isha Foundation in Coimbatore is a wonderful place to… Don't believe what she says. <laughs> I believe… I believe in her. And she also educated me about the various courses uh, you conduct there to benefit uh, the body and mind and soul. My question is, so I am used to, I mean, uh, know about the colleges uh, right from my… Uh, olden times, all the colleges, some schools, they practice the admissions to conduct in two kinds. One is donation, whoever can afford, and the other one is by merit. Now, my question is, what is the merit uh, you see in a uh, devotee or in an applicant to be able to join Isha Foundation courses without paying any uh, a nominal fee? I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, it's not a complaint, but there must be some merit for some people. What is that merit? I want to define the merit. See, uh, if you want to get into an university, you're looking for a certain kind of competence. If you want to, want to get into your school, a certain different kind of competence. But you want to get into spiritual pro process. So you must understand this, when it comes to individual bodies, they are differently capable. When it comes to individual minds, they're differently capable. When it comes to the inner dimension, all of us are equally capable. So because everybody has merit, they have to pay donation. <laughs> now <laughs> now the thing is, there was a time when I experimented no donation programs. No donation, just come, free, we will do it. Even now there are many programs which are free. But now we have acquired a certain reputation, so people sit, but even now just see those few people are walking up and down, they're leaving just now, okay? If they had paid five thousand rupees, they wouldn't be leaving <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is just a gossip session between you and me, so it's okay, they can go halfway through the gossip, no problem. But when I want to deliver a spiritual process, it costs my life. If I don't throw out my energy, it's not going to happen. With words, it's not going to happen. Ask people who have been through the programs, they get blown away. They're not getting blown away by nothing. Because it costs life. You have to throw your life into it. I don't want to throw my life at irresponsible people. And I've seen, I've seen, unfortunately, unfortunately it's still true for most human beings, if they say, I'm going to come for this program for three days, their word unfortunately is not good enough. In between if they get a message, Sadhguru, I need to go, they'll say. So make them pay fifteen thousand rupees, they don't go. <laughs> there must be a cost, there must be a… I mean… Yes, so all our initial programs, first two levels of programs they must pay. But the third level of program, all the advanced programs, there are no fees. By then they have matured, then, then they are trustworthy. Once they say they will be there, they will be there. So after the second level of program, none of the programs have any fee. <laughs> Sadhguruji, I have a dream. Uh, you, 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 you're beginning to look like uh, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Yes, I have a dream, tell me. This dream is an in India where all the marriages are happening, either inter-caste or inter-religion. Are you? Why? Mandatorily, so that after two, one generation or two generations, people will get confused or totally forget and totally leave, leave it off to, uh, to be able to know a, a person's caste. Because unfortunately, an XYZ is a sportsman or sportswoman, gets a medal from uh, an Oly Olympics or something. The immediate, immediately you go to Google and the maximum number of searches is XYZ which caste? Really? It's a fact, Guruji. I don't think so. It's a, it's a dire fact. The, the, the more number of searches will be for looking for the she or her, his caste. Mm. So, to Maybe they want to marry them. For me? <laughs> so this is my dream, uh, Sadhguruji. <laughs> People should get confused. Everywhere it's in, uh, it should be tangled with uh, all in intercast things. Is it right? Will it happen? I don't like anything intercast because first of all, when I meet people, it never even occurs to me what caste they are. So I don't know how to do intercastes, I only see human beings <laughs> So when you… you must understand this. This is a… a misunderstanding which has led into a discriminatory process. This is just a differentiation we did in the society at one time. When there were no schools, when there was no university, then and then were no engineering colleges, IITs and business management schools, all this. Now, if you are born in a blacksmith's uh, house, the only school is your father and your uncle who are doing tonk, tonk, tonk every day, that's your school. That's where you learn, learn your skill. So when you want to get married, suddenly if you marry a goldsmith's daughter, okay? She doesn't know what to cook for you, she doesn't know how to manage this house for you, she doesn't know how to give you firewood or coal or what you need. So they said, if you're a blacksmith, you marry only blacksmith's daughter because tch, it will be supportive. But today, today you may… you may be coming from a blacksmith caste, but you may become a doctor, you may become an engineer, you may become something else. So that process is not relevant anymore. At a one time to preserve the knowledge base because that was the only training ground available. See, suppose you marry a princess and bring her to agricultural family, tomorrow morning she has to go with you and carry food for you, she will not. It will not work for you. 
So they said, if you are in the farm, you must marry a farmer's daughter, you don't marry somebody else. But today, you are going all over the place and doing whatever you wish, accordingly they will marry. I don't think you need any mandatory laws, you just watch it in twenty-five years, it'll be very hard for you to figure out who is who. At the same time, at the same time I must tell you, these differences are also beautiful because unfortunately certain people make our differences into discriminations, unfortunate, but differences are beautiful. I walk into some home in United States, in any home if I go, you know Indian homes, first thing you enter their home, the cooking smell will be all over the house. It will actually, when you're driving in only, you will smell it. When I smell it, I'm in, uh, you know, San Francisco area, I walk into this house and uh, I sit down and uh, they're all, you know, been in United States for more than forty, forty-five years, children are all totally American. Then I ask, are you Pillai? Say, Sadhguru, how do you know? I said, uh, the seasoning that you're doing is Pillai seasoning, I know my nose knows, this is Pillai seasoning. <laughs> I'm saying these subtle differences were so beautiful that each one of us, our own way of cooking, our own way of language, the way we speak, the way we do things, it's fantastic. But unfortunately, when you make it discriminatory, it becomes ugly. If you can take away the discrimination and keep the differences, how beautiful it is. No society in the world, no… No society in the world has these fine distinctions. People live on the same street for generations, but still this home will cook like this, this home will cook the other way. How beautiful it is! But this is completely gone because now everybody is trained on Google. <laughs> the same Aukai from Krishna district, Godavari district, Telangana, Andhra, is it not different? Distinctly different. All these subtleties, you want to take it away and make it one McDonald's food, okay? No, I think that is an ugly world. These subtleties, these differences are fantastic. We are a colorful culture because of these differences. But… but the problem, the problem with human mind is unfortunately, a goldsmith thinks he is superior to the blacksmith. Though you can very easily live without a goldsmith, but you can't live without a blacksmith. <laughs> so this… this discriminatory thing, we must take it away. I must take this opportunity and tell you this. People are always asking me, Sadhguru, what is your advice for our children? As if children need anybody's advice <laughs> Without figuring out, how to raise children, you delivered children, so you need… you are the one who needs advice <laughs> So when… Uh, you know, when I was traveling in nineties uh, and things, my… my daughter was a small infant, three and a half, four months, she was traveling with me alone in the car. My left hand on her and driving through, my right hand is always on the floor, so <laughs> my right leg is always on the floor. So I drove like this, wherever I go, I hand, hand her over to some family and they took care of her well. But there is a problem, every adult is very eager to teach something to a child. The moment they see child, they get this itch, they want to teach something that's not worked in their life <laughs> Yes, <laughs> because if it had worked, they should be more joyful and more exuberant than the child. It is obviously not worked, whatever they learnt. Maybe they learnt a few tricks of how to make money, how to survive in the world, but they didn't… they learned nothing about life compared to the child. So I made one rule, nobody will teach her anything. No one, two, three, no ABC, no Mary had a little lamb because I don't care whether Mary had a lamb or not <laughs> So one thing happened, because nobody taught her anything, she was all ears all the time like this, looking at everything because nobody tells her anything. By the time she's eighteen months, she could speak three languages fluently. And I also made this rule that I never teach her anything. So when she was twelve, thirteen years of age, one day she came to me 
she was disturbed about something that happened in the school and she came home and said, you're teaching everybody so many things but you're not teaching me anything. I said, well, I'm not given to teach people unsolicited. Now that you've come, this is all you need to know. Never look up to anybody. She looked at me like this, what about you? I said, even me, because if you look up to me, you will miss the value of who I am. Maybe you will hang me on your wall, that is not why I'm here. If you look at me just for who I am, your life will be immensely benefited and energized. If you look up to me, you will hang me somewhere in your house. So do not look up to anybody, do not look down on anybody, this is all. This is all it takes. If you… this is not simple because all the time your mind is saying, oh, she's good, he's not good, he's okay, he's not okay, this is fine, that is fine, this is pure, this is impure, this is God, this is devil, this is going on endlessly. If you stop this one thing and simply look at life for what it is, you will effortlessly navigate your way through life. Very well said, Sadhguruji. Now, since it's time to take a few questions from our friends here, very, they are very enthusiastic. I, I have to uh, sacrifice my question, question paper. paper. Yes. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, yeah. Namaste Sadhguruji, this is Satish Pendiala and… Uh, you bright yeah, sure Andy. Dharma Sankat versus societal constraints, how to balance these two? What is that? Dharma Sankat? Dharma, which, emotions. Which? Oh, Dharma is emotion for you. I mean, <laughs> true emotions, <laughs> divine emotions versus societal constraints, how to balance these two in life of confusion? Uh, there is lot of mess up in the question itself. There are no divine emotions. Emotions are human. Even animals are capable of emotion. You have a dog at home? Yeah. Does it have emotions? Lot of emotion. But you don't know whether God has emotion or not. Do you know? Hello? Then why are you saying divine emotion? Human emotion you're talking about. It's just that you think your emotions are divine. This is a serious problem. You must understand your thought and emotion are just your psychological drama. You can conduct it whichever way you want. So I'm asking you, if you had a choice of having either nasty emotions, miserable emotions or blissful emotions, what would you choose for yourself? Please choose right now, I'll bless you <laughs> because that's all you have to do. Anyway, they're your emotions. You have to choose what should happen within you, isn't it? But you are talking as if it's happening to you from somewhere. Your thought and emotion and whatever else happens within you, happens within you. It doesn't happen from somewhere else. You may be taking a stimuli from somewhere else, but the source of what happens is happening within you. Your psychological drama… Miru, film director, Sarandi? No, no, music chestnut. Music mark. Your drama, you must be the director. If you have a lousy drama going, it's because you're a lousy director, that's all. Yes, <laughs> that's all it is. You think it's something else. No, you're just a lousy director. You just have to learn the art of directing your drama well. Yen <laughs> Chaptaru? So, please manage the drama well, make the drama into a beautiful drama because there is only when one wealth in your life. Listen to me carefully. There is only one wealth in your life. Things that you wear, things that they were stored up, this is not your wealth, this is just a headache. The only wealth that you have in your life is the profoundness of your experience of this life. <clears throat> How profound is it? Is it profound enough that every moment is overwhelmingly beautiful for you or is it a lousy drama that's going on? If you have a lousy drama going in your head, 
don't blame your family, your god or your dog. It's just that you're a bad director, you just have to fix that. The next one. Namaskaram Sadhguru, I'm here. Norma, okay. Uh, so, we have solutions to revitalize the rivers, but what, are, what is the solution to remove the existing plastic wastage? Uh, there's a lot of it in India or anywhere. Yeah, so what are the solutions to remove that? See, plastic is a miraculous material. Let's understand this. All the plastic warriors, please listen to me carefully. Plastic is a miraculous material. It's one of the most fantastic materials that human beings have created. The problem is not of plastic, the problem is of human irresponsibility. So that's what we need to fix. If we generate a more responsible population, plastic is a wonderful thing. How many things in our lives have become easy, and wonderful because of plastics. But we think plastics are bad. Plastics are not bad. Plastic is a wonderful, fantastic material. Human beings have become irresponsible. Let's fix that. But the damage that's already done, please understand all the damage that we have done in the form of pol pollution, it is not very difficult to fix, it just needs determined political action and responsible action from the citizens of this country and the world, which can be done. But the more serious problem is the depletion of resource. Depletion of soil and water is a far more serious problem and much more difficult to revitalize. You are saying, okay, we will re revitalize the rivers, it's not as simple as that. But removing the plastic is not really a big problem. If we have a project to remove that, first you get Hyderabad city responsible enough that they don't throw plastics all over the place. Then you will see removing it is just a matter of one month or two months. The entire Telangana, whatever plastic, we can remove it in a two months time. What do you say, Viswaswar? First stop throwing it. You stop that. Removing it will happen in two months and we can recycle the plastic, it's a very useful material. A material that does not deteriorate is not against you. This means you can use it a thousand times. Anything that you can use a thousand times over means we are not going to exploit other resources unnecessarily. So plastic is a solution for environmental problems that we have. But unfortunately, we have made a solution into a problem. Namaste Guruji, last twenty years uh, I was boggling with one of the you know, problem in my mind regarding understanding what is right and what is wrong. Oh. And I was just be, uh, <laughs> to tell you that, to give a solution for a given problem, I just wanted to say this. Actually there were two railway tracks, one is alive and the other one is abandoned. There was a board also, there were ten children playing on the tracks, seeing that abandoned board, one girl child told to other students, let us not play on the live track so that we will be hit by the running train. Let us play on the abandoned track. But nobody had, but this girl who has advised gone and playing on the abandoned track, all other nine children were playing on the live track. There was a speeding train is approaching them. Now the driver has to decide which track he has to run the train. This was the question asked to me by twenty years back one of my friend, today also I really do not understand what answer I have to give it to him, kindly sir. Hmm. Anyway for your information, the driver cannot decide which track to go upon. It is the operator, the traffic manager who decides which track it will go on. Because it's not about… the train is not there for this one child or nine children on the track. The train is made for those who are traveling in the train, the thousand people who are traveling in the train. Driver's responsibility is for them. Those who, who play on the track, on the road, it is their individual responsibility to preserve their lives. Of their children, that's a different matter. 
I must tell you this, when I was training to get my license and even after that, when I fly helicopters in uh, United States, I was flying with my instructor. Tennessee, where our center is, is a fabulous country, it's Appalachian mountains and beautiful rivers and streams. So we like to fly just ten feet above the river all along the valley, it's fantastic rides. When we are doing this, I asked, uh, suppose we crash into the river, what are the rules? He said, it's your problem. You crash… you want to crash into the river, you can crash into the river. But what are the rules? He said, the rules are just this, if you leave oil slicks in the water, they will charge your insurance or they will confiscate your property. But you want to kill yourself, it's up to you, okay? <laughs> if… if you crash a helicopter in United States on an abandoned piece of land, you don't harm anybody's property or person, then you don't even have to report, do you understand? Only if you damage some property, they will come after you. If you just crash and damage your helicopter, it's up to you. I'm saying it is time that in India also everybody is made to understand your life, your well-being is your responsibility. We think government has to take care of us. This has to go. It has to go. Every human being, every citizen should see that my life is my responsibility. Well, when a speeding train is coming, you want to run across the track and somebody else has to stop you. Why? You're testing your horoscope or what? <laughs> A lot of people on the road, that's what I think, I think they're testing their horoscope because their horoscope they will live… they says they will live till eighty-five. When a car or a bus is coming at full speed, they run across, they're testing it whether it's really true or not. But what you don't understand is the railway track and the road is built for the vehicles or the trains which go on it, not for you to walk on it. For walking, there must be another place. If there is no place, it's for you to demand from the government, there must be a walking place for me, that I don't have to walk on the road. Instead of that, you walk on the road and now you come up with these hypothetical philosophical questions. There is no philosophy in this. We are… if anybody plays on the railway track, the children, they may not know, but the parents who produce these children, they need to be arrested immediately. <laughs> they must be. So because you can produce children and throw them on the streets, they're going on doing it endlessly. We have multiplied four times in seventy years. It is time that what you produce also is your responsibility. Once you have a child, it's a twenty-year project. If you're not ready for it, don't have them. Sadhguruji… But… Hello? Sadhguruji, one thing I want to tell you, with all the enlight… <laughs> with all the enlightenment you gave, with, with this wonderful experience… So, with this wonderful experience and whatever I gained uh, from this wonderful conversation with you, Sadhguruji, I go home and try to compose more beautiful tunes so that next time you see my face, you remember me only by those tunes but not by a horoscope and anything else <laughs> <laughs> I have… Uh, I have not much heard much of your music, Andy, but one… whatever one music that you produce, that Jatadaraya, that one, we still use in many of our programs. And many people who have done the programs, they immensely enjoy that. So, thank you very I'm much. Blessed, Guruji, Sat Keep Guruji. making good I'm honored. music. I'm honored. Is it a part of it? Is it a part of it? Part of it? Part of it? Actually, I thought of uh, making Sadhguruji sing my tune. <laughs> Sadhguru, you want to. Uh, can you please sing my tune?
You've already mic. <laughs> Whatever you like. Uh, I'm not a musician. I don't know any raga thala. Nenu padeke na ge raga mo yemi thele idandi. Sigle idu naka. Antiku padtham. Sadhguruji, Sadhguruji, sik. Meer sikku padaro. Sikku le do meer. It is a different meaning, sir. Meer sikku padaro. Enda di? Sikku padaro. Sikku padaro. What is that? Did I say something wrong? Thank you. <laughs> Some lines, a few lines for us, Sadhguruji. I should sing. <clears throat> oh. Vastavattid, Potavattid, Asayandu Kanta, Chesina Karmamu, Chadani Padarthamu, Cherunumi Vanta, Setilo Amrutamu Unanta Sepe Anadam Mulanta Agadam Pai Poe Nadu Yavaru Raru 